Look at this. Huh? Look what I got for you, everyone. The laws of Shabbos. Simon Shin Ches. The laws of Muktzah. Huh? Good? What do you say, Rachmiel? Looks, looks, uh, looks, looks nice. Good. This is a PDF? Good. Looks good, Trump. I this don't know what it is. It, I downloaded it from oh, Chabad, so it's probably a PDF. Chabad Library Org. So you downloaded it and you're showing it. It's like saved to your desktop. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, no, listen. That's a, that's a PDF. Should, yeah, I don't know if good. it is. Listen, if I want to go to the next page, I have to click over here next. So I didn't okay. really download the whole thing. Okay, let's go. Come on. Ready? Simon Shin Ches. Devarim HaMutarim. Things which are permissible, the asurim and forbidden, the taltel to move on Shabbos. Muksa, the laws of Muksa. And in it are pay test 89 laws. 89, I'm going to call it laws. Okay, now enough. We can just say like this. <clears throat> According to the Torah, you can touch anything you want to on Shabbos. You can move anything you want to on Shabbos. Absolutely nothing wrong with touching and moving on Shabbat your candlesticks, your, uh, you know, your, uh, the money is on your table. You can move the money off. You can take it with your hands. No problem whatsoever, according to the Torah. According to the Torah, you can move a, a, a fountain pen, if there's such a thing as fountain pens, and anything you want to, you can move on Shabbos. You have a precious guitar or something like that. You can move it. But the rabbis decided they didn't want this. And you're going to see it started with King Solomon even. The rabbis decided that they did not want people to act on Shabbat the way they act in the weekday. And as we've said many, many times in this class, the rabbis are the same thing as the Torah because it's a commandment in the Torah for the rabbis to make laws and fences around the Torah. It's a commandment from the Torah. So the whole argument between the Rambam, the Maimonides and Ramban, it was it called? It was it Milchemat Hashem? If the commandments of the rabbis are also considered to be from the Torah or not, and the reason that they're more lenient because the rabbis just decided to, that the punishments are if you have a doubt if you did a rabbinical commandment you don't have to do it again. If you have a doubt if you did a Torah commandment you don't know it did you? Okay, so that's here we go. Now we're going to learn a law. All these laws are purely from the rabbis called Muktza. Asru Chachamim, the rabbis forbade, prohibited, letaltel, to move, and we're going to see this means only moving with your hand. Muktza is only moving with your hand. It's forbidden to move things with your hand on Shabbat. Muktza does I'm, not I'm, apply I'm, I'm curious though, backing up a little bit. These movements in in the Torah, we're talking about the part about not moving something from uh, from inside to outside, right? That's different. And, yeah, yeah, that's... yeah, and 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 basically, this is an extension on this that the rabbis put up. I, not really. You will see. There's several reasons. That's one. Okay, reason. but what is? I, I'm really trying to get inside the head of the rabbis that they wanted to. Why they did this? The altar rebbe took your worry into consideration and he's going to explain it. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Asru Chachamim, the rabbis forbid us to move with your hand, mix at the vorim, certain things on Shabbat, kaderech in the way, shahi, shahu, oseh, that you do it in the weekday. And it was, let's say, take, take an example. If you have money on your table, right? You have money on your table. It is permissible to move that money with your foot, with your nose. It is not 
prohibited to move it. It's prohibited to move it with your hands and only with your hands in a normal way. With the back of your hand, it could be permissible. Muktza is only a prohibition to move with your hands certain things. It's not prohibited to touch them. If you want to touch your car on Shabbat, if you're sure it won't move, you're allowed to touch it. You're not allowed to move it with your hands. We're going to learn the law. So the rabbis forbade you to move certain things on Shabbat the way that you move them in the weekday. Why did the rabbis decide this? Asked Jerachmiel Spiegel. Omru, the rabbi said, Ma im his hero nevim. If just as the prophets warned us, the tzivoy, and they commanded us, Shelo yehei hi luchacha b'shabbat, that your walking movements on Shabbat should not be like hi luchacha, like your walking in the weekday on Shabbat, you're supposed to walk more easily, more calmly, you're not supposed to say, Shalom Sicha, and you're not supposed to speak on Shabbat like you speak in the weekday. The rabbis said you shouldn't do that. How do we know the rabbis said? Shine'emar, like it says, Daber Dover, like it says, you should not speak your words. Kal v'chomer, much more so, Shalom Yetiltul v'shabbat, Ketiltulu b'chol. If the rabbis were careful, the, the rabbis, the prophets, the prophets said you shouldn't speak on Shabbat like you speak in the weekday. That's a small thing, right? To speak a big thing like moving things, right? Touching things, for sure, you shouldn't move it. So that you should not be like a weekday in your eyes. So, one reason for Muktza is to remind you that it is Shabbat. To remind you all the time that it is Shabbat. And if you're not reminded, then eventually you'll come to carry things out, etc. You'll come to move. You'll do all your work on Shabbat. You say, I have a free day. Now is the time to do a little bit of work around the house. Shahari hum batal, because he is not doing anything. The Yoshev Beton is sitting in his house. And he'll think of something he wants to do. The Nimsa Shalo Shabbat. It'll end up that he didn't rest at all. And he negates the reason what it says in the Torah in order that you should rest. This is always the lecture that they always give, you know, these. What is it, rabbis? Hard, hardcore rabbis. A non-religious person, what does he do on Shabbat? He goes to the beach. Or he goes traveling around, goes to the beach. This. So it ends up he never really rests. He's running around, he's playing this, he's all tired out, he's all knocked out. By the time he goes back to work, so he's all knocked out. Okay, let, let's let's leave that. But anyway, there's a, there's a certain point about this. On Shabbat, you're with your family, and you rest. Now, what, now even with all these rabbinic uh, additions that are added on, not touching something in the house, I'm afraid you're going to move it, the non-religious guy, he's not going to follow this stuff anyway. He's still going to go to the beach. Why for all the rest of us who don't want to Shabbat? I'm sure, the, the, I'm sure there's a good reason. I just, I'm curious... That's what he's saying, so that the people who are religious shouldn't eventually come and go to the beach. In other words, to remind you, a religious person, to remind the religious person, it is Shabbat. And because it's well, reminding... Well, well, why can't they trust that we know it's Shabbat? I mean, uh, people won't remember. We're, I didn't want to learn these laws, but there's the laws of... Uh, maybe we, we will learn them, actually. Shin Yud Chet. But there's the laws of... Um, what's called Shia Hatmana, that's in like Resh Nun, what is it, Vav, Resh Nun Zion. And it, there's another, an, another set of decrees of the rabbis regarding cooking before Shabbos. Before Shabbos. 
There are certain things that you are not allowed to leave on the fire before Shabbat. Before Shabbat. Which type of things? Things that are not cooked sufficiently. Things that are not cooked sufficiently, that they have not gotten, gotten to, let's say, one-third cooked, you cannot put them on the fire before Shabbat. Because you can't cook on Shabbos. No, no, you, you, your, your vessels can cook for you on Shabbos. No problem. No problem. According to the Torah, you can put food, let's say, even according to the rabbis, but I'm, you, can, yeah. you can put a piece of totally raw meat in a pot before Shabbat, totally raw. It has to be raw when Shabbat comes in. you permissible to put in, and on Shabbat it boils and cooks. This is 100%. by the rabbis? No, 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 100% okay, according to everybody. Okay. Totally raw, no problem. Totally raw. The problem is, if it's a little bit more than raw, cooked, it's taken out of being raw. Because if it's raw, they say, let me, let me, let me, let me let's finish. Totally raw meat is okay to put on showers. If it's meat is one third cooked, it's also okay to put it on the fire on Shabbat. Before Shabbat. Before Shabbat. On Shabbat, you can never put anything on the fire. But if it's less than one-third cooked and not totally raw, and there's a little bit cooked, but less than one-third, you cannot put it on the fire before Shabbat. Why not? Because they're worried that a person is going to come home on Shabbat and his food won't be cooked one-third and he's going to stoke up the fire. Because people, when they get their needs, they forget about Shabbat. They forget about everything. Right? That's what we're learning in Hasidut in the morning, that the connection to God has to be in a way of peninut. What's it mean in peninut in the inside? That when he sees, you know, a hundred dollar bill, what are they laying in the street, right? Is he going to pick it up on Shabbat or is he not going to pick it up on Shabbat? Is he going to move it with his foot or something? Is he going to move it for, he'll say a hundred dollars. I need the money. What a hundred dollars talking about. I'm going to go against the Shabbos, the Holy Shabbos for a hundred dollars. But if it was a thousand, that's a different story. And some people say, a thousand? What are you talking Like the joke I told you, right, about the guy who wanted to be a coin. The, the rabbi says, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, I'm going to sell out my Judaism for a million dollars? Oh, this is a different story. So the same thing is over here. The rabbis had to make a decree that certain things you have to do on Shabbat to remind you that it is Shabbat. Because if you don't, You'll totally forget, and eventually you'll come to the conclusion that what am I keeping this Shabbat for? This is the most ridiculous thing in the world. I mean, Shabbat is just like a, a day like every other day. You can't tell scientifically which day is Shabbat. You can tell, tell which day of the month it is. Look at the moon. You can even tell which day of the year it is. Look at the sun. But you can't tell which day of the week it is. There's no such thing as a week according to science. How do I know this is Shabbat or if it's Tuesday? Or what's the difference between, right? Maybe you'll come and tell me it's forbidden to turn on lights on Tuesday. Well, why not? Huh? Why not? He says, no, the fact is God created the world and God said on Shabbat you're supposed to rest and God gave the Torah and the Torah tells you how you're supposed to rest. And if we don't have the rabbis making these laws that God told them to make laws, then people are not going to do what God says. They're going to all of a sudden wise up and think, what is this Shabbos business? Why can't I jump on my motorcycle and just go? What's the problem? Right? So therefore, the rabbis made all sorts of decrees to remind you of the holiness of Shabbat. Just to so, play the, uh, the, the, the other side of the coin that somebody might say, not that I'm saying. Um, isn't there also the possibility that the, the, the rabbis, they, they, they laid so much stuff, so many rules, so many regulations, that a person could say, you know, I had enough. Of <laughs> You're killing my Shabbat. Of course, of course you can, sure. Of course, no doubt about it. That's the importance of feeling the holiness of the rabbis and the holiness of Shabbat. That's the whole, the, the whole Catholic, Protestant, the whole, these, all these, the whole thing is based on just exactly what you said. Who are these rabbis? Who says Sabbath is Sunday? Monday, Tuesday, who says it's not? 
Who says it has to be on? Yeah, on but we're not talking about that. We're talking about can I put the meat on if it's like between one percent to thirty two point three percent cooked or yeah, yeah, more, sure. or not? I'm not talking about the big picture stuff at all. Uh, I mean, certainly the, the Torah is the Torah, and the rabbis have a right, and they're doing all the right things. But I'm talking about like some of this minutia. That's the point. You know, that's much. exactly. That's the point. If the minutia is part of something big and important, then every detail is very important. You know, it's very detail is important. If you buy yourself a brand new, you know, Rolls Royce car. And, you know, one of the pistons doesn't work or one of the spark plugs doesn't work. You know how much a spark plug costs? A spark plug, let's say it costs $10. So the whole thing, the car doesn't work right. If it's not your car, you could care less. But if it's your car and it's important, so it's part of, of, of a Rolls Royce, it's part of my car. And let's go to the show with the meat. But this, you, right, you, these, little, these little details, the rabbis did not decide this arbitrarily. No, I'm sure they didn't. But still, I'm... I'm uh, Listen, I'm, I'm try, I really want to, you know, understand this so I can do it all better. But, okay, like with the meat. Now, I know the shalom pot, when you put it on before Shabbos, um, you can't open it. You can't take it off, see how it is. It is. You can't add a little bit more salt to it. Once you take it off, it's off. You eat it. That's it. Right. Why Unless you held on to it, there's laws about there's, that. There's, 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 I know, there's, you can tilt it and hold on to it. And, right. But that's that's exactly the point. Were the rabbis just arbitrarily making laws to keep people in line, or were the rabbis really representatives of God? No, I'm not saying that the laws are not. I'm not trying and to say the, that the laws the are arbitrary. That's not it at all. The, it is like the spark plug, like you destroyed. These laws right. are are maybe consistent, but at right. what point? Does it become unnecessary? Because it, it, at the end of the day, it's not Torah. It's 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 rabbinical law. It's not it's not it's not. No Torah. no no. That's what I'm trying to say. The rabbinical laws are Torah laws. I know I know, but still we we we. I mean, well, they're there to protect the Torah laws. I, I understand, but how many fences do they have to make? That's not the point. That's not the point. The point is, I, I know that they're, they're consistent with. I I know these 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 little laws that we're talking about are consistent with the Torah, but, you know... It's and, not just consistent with the Torah. This is Torah. This is what hey, God wants us to do. No problem with that. I, I'm not disregarding it, but still, at, at one point, you know, I, I, I was... All right, so let, like, let me, good, know, let me ask I gave you, you enough question. things not to do. You're supposed to enjoy yourself on Shabbos. Let me ask you another question. What yeah. difference does it make if Shabbat... But you look at the time when Shabbat comes in. It comes in at, let's say, you know, 8.35. Now, now let's say the last time is 8.40. Let's say 40. What difference does it make if it's 8.40, 8.41, 8.42? I'm keeping the whole Shabbat 24 hours, right? So I'll, I'll keep a couple minutes afterwards. So I'm taking it in five minutes late. There's no, in a sense, the, every detail is tremendously important. Every detail is now. There are things which are called customs. Customs are also important. Yes, true. But let's say you know you happen to be a skaver or chassid, and they wear white socks. By them, it's tremendously important to wear white socks. If you happen to be a Chernobyl chassid, then they don't wear white. I'm just taking for example. They, they, I don't know the details. They don't wear white. They wear black socks, and they wear uh, 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 you know a gray strimal. Okay, these are customs that are definitely made up by the rabbis, definitely. They're definitely made up. But on the other hand, there's also an importance to this. They're also important. <clears throat> They're also, it, it, it's a but, customs. But, but drop, but drop, there are also some stuff that's, that's between, a, uh, like, I'll give you an example. I haven't been sick at the Quartal on Shabbos. It was my first minion in, since Purim. And my minion that I usually daven with during the week is not, fully there, so I dive in with another minion, and there's always one minion that's a minute later for the second. Right. Is that a minag, or is that a tyrant? Uh, what is that? You know, no, but, you know, sure. he, he thinks it's, you know, it's there a are, beautiful uh, minion, and that's the minion right. I dive in with. But. In Judaism, there's all sorts of hidurium that people take. There's the brisk, 
they're type of like uh, Litvisher Jews, and they take all sorts of hidurim. They go around and they hear Kriyas Torah like three or four times on Shabbat, once in the Sephardi and once in this place because they want to yeah. make. It. Okay, those are things that person takes on themselves personally. It's important. So it's a minag. It's a minag that person takes on, but okay. the minagim in a way are no less important. You know. That's the idea of kavana. Does a person just do it because of, you know, he's got personality problems. He's like, what do we call it? Uh, obsessive compulsive. Or is it, he's doing it because he really is, you know, someone or the serving God. The question is where it comes from, a lot of these things. Where do they come from? If it comes from the rabbis, that these people are holy, then we have to look at them as they're holy. That's what, that was one of the great things of the Altar Rebbe, where he wrote in the Shulchan Aruch, he gives so many reasons for what he brings. But there were a lot of holy people, and and the, the the how do you say, you know, God is found in the details. By the non-Jews, they say the devil is in the details. But here, the divine is in the details. The, the details of Shabbat. That's the that's the divinity. But like I say, you have to know how far it goes. There's a lot of people in Chabad, for instance, that they don't want to dress black. They won't dress black. They want to dress the way that they want to wear. Right? They want okay. If it's that important to you. Right, that you do. So it's not an essential thing. You want to, you decide, you're in a Chabad, you want to wear a short jacket, you, you don't want to wear a hat on Shabbos. You don't, okay, these things have reasons for them, but it's, it's not. It's more like that in the 70s, Rob, when you, I mean, in the early 70s, people, people Chabad, uh, Shluchim were even a little bit more colorful. In sure. Their dress. That's right. That's right. Right. That's right. That's right. 100%. So, I mean, these things, ha everything has to be taken. Uh, in its own individual way. It has to be taken in its own individual way. You have to look at the facts and you have to weigh the facts out clearly and then you have to go and ask, you know, is this really essential of Shabbos? Is this really a, a thing that was really very important? Is it really that important? Should I should wear a tie on Shabbat? Should I have to wear a hat like everybody else? Is this really the, you know, essential Judaism or not? Maybe yes, maybe not. Each person according to his own. His own thing. But your question is a good question. Of course, it's on, you know, it's, it's on point. But you, on the other hand, you can't, you know, just wipe off all of the details. That's what Christianity basically did. It's just that we believe in Torah. We don't believe in any details. You don't have to put on any new commandments. You don't have to put on any boxes on. It doesn't make any difference which day is Shabbos. It doesn't make any difference who a Jew, who a Jew is. It doesn't make any difference what you eat. It makes a difference what comes out of your mouth, etc. And it eventually, you know, morphs into this monster, you know, that just has nothing to do whatsoever with the Torah and with the commandments. And it says it's based on the Torah. So, you know, on one hand, you can't be, you can't take away that there's so much body that there's no soul. But on the other hand, there can't be that there's so much soul that there's no body. It has to be both together. And that's why we're learning these laws. And we're going to talk about this more, God willing, tomorrow. 8.15. Hey, thank you. Good answer. <laughs> okay. Thanks, See you, everyone. Shalom. Shalom.